Oh, all right. Now we're starting. Welcome back, guys. So again, this is something I'm trying to do on my own, but here we are. And that with me, I have a little reunion. Yep. Ain't that right, Sergio? I have Sergio. Yep. Just don't got Andrew now, but but it's doing okay. It, doing it solo. Doing it solo. So this time the questions are going to be more focused on you. And without further ado, Sergio Medina from Idola Royal Coda and Vice President of Blue Song Records. Am I missing anything else besides X members, Stolas, and Sion? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. whatever is it's uh I think what needs to be named is what we got presently. So yeah, right now it's really focused on Blue Swan and Idola since the we just dropped a new song yesterday. And, and yes, you yeah. did. we're going to get into that right now. But first, you Sergio, how have you been, man? Last time we talked, you know, it was our current state was like, I don't know what's going to happen. We were still a little yeah. pessimistic. But yeah. It's a little uh, I'm not, not as pessimistic as I was. Things are looking better in the world, thankfully. Um, but you never know. There's always a reason to be pessimistic. Uh, but in regards to uh, just how I'm doing, I'm, I just got off, uh, I got back from New York from recording a new album with Nova Charisma yesterday. So I'm a bit tired. So if you hear that in my voice, I apologize. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just did a lot of traveling, spent a lot of time in New York in the last, all of June for the most part. Um, and it was building up to uh, getting this Idola release re ready. So. Awesome. Awesome. We'll get, we'll get into all of that, you know, in the in the time we have, you know. But for now, Idola dropped Counterfeit Shrines finally after months of waiting from fans, you know, and mm -hmm. all the I guess the fixing what's the called the paperwork I guess with it, with their yeah contracts. the legalities of everything yeah the, with the, like all legal issues got resolved and they finally dropped. So how does it feel to finally be able to share that with the fans? Um, it felt euphoric for like two hours yesterday about two hours i was like oh my god i can't believe we waited almost two years to release this music and so for two hours yesterday i felt very euphoric and then immediately got hit with all right time to get to work time to get to uh planning the next thing how are we doing with the release and uh yeah it's just there's always something to be done and so there's always a distraction to kind of pull you out of a good moment. <laughs> and so uh, that's how it was yesterday. And, you know, the reception has been great. I mean, personally for me, I was like, I, I was like, fuck it, man. Finally, I, I was hyping yeah. up, jumping up and down. Yeah. You know, and it's great. It's great to finally be able to do it. And so September 17th, you know, the architect finally. Mm -hmm. Yep, finally. And uh, what's interesting is that we, we didn't settle on a release date until, um, there's just so much so many logistics so september 17th that still is very a very freshly placed release date so it could change possibly no 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 it won't change now oh, okay no 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 it's uh, set it's done it's it's, that it's done it's, it's just fresh like september 17th uh that that's the day all right well we'll look forward to it you, know, you guys dropped the vinyls the variants and mm -hmm. There's going to be more variants to come because I know, like, you know, you guys are publishing a lot more, right? Correct? I, I believe so. Yes, I believe so. Um, I think yesterday we announced seven of them, I think. Yeah. And three of them sold out. Yeah, I one of them snag one. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Yeah. And the one of one of them's uh, well on its way to selling out. And I think there's two more. I think there might be one or two more. All right. Uh, yeah. I think. I don't know, hundred percent. So don't. I don't know. You're the vice president. <laughs> you, you should be on top of well, this. <laughs> well, here's here's. I like to keep it a little vague, but also because Rise has a heavy hand in this too. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's coming. It, let's just let's it, just go with it. Yeah, let's just say it's coming, but also, be careful, because I had people hitting me up yesterday, going, "Man, it's sold out before I could get it." And, uh yeah um there there should be some more coming all right that's that's what matters but um and also that's great you know i think that's all said and done so fans just gotta wait so but with that one final question regards towards idola can we expect another single drop soon or we're just getting that one teaser for now um what's we're in we're almost in july 
yeah. Su- expect one. Expect another one. Not super soon, but for sure this summer. That's um, awesome. Awesome. You know, hopefully yeah. it's mutual, hopefully it's that it's that teaser. Now we know the uh, mutual fear. <laughs> um I can't say for sure, but we do have something special planned for that one. Hopefully. Hopefully. hopefully finger, well, fingers look, crossed. You know, hope looking forward to it. You know, always it's great. Now, Nova Charisma. I've been <laughs> I've been excited for this one, you know. So I'm excited to see what you and uh Donovan have been putting out. Mm-hmm. And so you've been in New York, but firstly, so hopefully my, hopefully, you, you know, my area treated you well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, we're in an area called Port Jefferson. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, it's a I know. Yeah, yeah. It's like a little more Real, upstate. Yeah. Really beautiful area and uh really beautiful, like hidden uh, getaway from the West coast. Definitely. Um, but yeah, we, we Nova wrote a record last May. And we worked on the demos for a long time. And also the reality and, and life hit everybody at different times. And so we just delayed it and delayed actually recording it. And so um, we finally got done with it um, two days ago. Awesome. So, so what can you tell us about this one? Is it going to be like the exposition trilogy or is this something new? Something no, fresh? it's just something new. Something new? Something new, yeah. Just... Uh, there's 10 songs and I think it's going to be a full record instead of releasing it in, uh, in little chunks, like we did. Yeah. The like EP forms. yeah well, I think it'll be a full record. All right. So but I know it's too early to tell, but like, if you can give like a little guesstimate, when could we expect like something, a little teaser or like a little, single? Oh, I don't, I don't know. That that is, it's, yeah. It's really early to tell. Uh, we have another song that we recorded last summer. That is a single, um, that might come out this summer sometime, but that is still being worked on, I think. All right. Um, well, but it's it's unrelated to the record we just recorded. Like we oh, okay. last last summer, we did a, an actual single single, but things were so tumultuous last summer with everything that was happening in the world. and um, It just felt it wasn't the right it, time. It just didn't feel like a time for music, honestly. I, uh, I, I felt and, idola same thing idola was planning a summer release last year i mean the record was done in may of last year and when i say done i mean masters are in um and we can start actually planning for a release and yeah last summer just didn't feel like a time for music no i mean now it's like in this year so it's good and um but that's good you know we got this two out of the way so nova charisma you can expect sometime like i'm guessing 2022 that's yeah probably either we're, we're in july probably probably 2022 yeah yeah and you, know, you guys are going on tour so how does it feel to finally go back on tour like to get the news like yo it's safe it's <sighs> i don't know i i i I won't believe it until it's happening. Is is how I'm looking at it. Is that way? Because I, Nova Charisma has a show in in, in LA, correct, California. Mm-hmm. But I I like I said, I won't believe it until I'm at the venue, like getting ready to play, and people are coming. I haven't been to a show yet. I've been to crowded outdoor spaces and okay. to crowded restaurants, and so things. I'm like, oh, things are kind of coming back, and a lot of places where people really aren't wearing masks anymore because they're vaccinated and so there's some sense of normalcy but i'm still so shell-shocked with last year that i am just reserving my excitement for when it actually feels like things are back and i don't know i think that might for me it might be on the road with idola because i i I think our first show um i don't remember where first show is but it's a big venue and so I really won't believe it until I see thousands of people packed into a, a, a room exactly. sweating on each other. And exactly. You're going to be like, holy shit, it's happening again. Yeah. That's when I think it'll, it'll really hit for me. Cool. But I haven't seen that yet. No. Um, yeah. Cause shows are coming back. And I know definitely like in my area in like New York, I'm in New Jersey, but you know, I'm like 10 mm-hmm. minutes away from the city, you know, mm-hmm. but I think the next couple of weeks and like next week, it's going to be fully reopened. So yeah. Like, 
that's going to be interesting to see how it goes. And yeah, but I'm looking forward to it. And I'm pretty sure the fans are excited too to see you guys on tour. Yeah, definitely. Definitely excited to see anybody who's going to come out to our shows. Definitely. Uh, yeah. It's going to be funny. Like, and I think I agree with you on that. You know, I have to see it to believe it. Like, I have a ticket, but I want to, you know, I want to wait until like I'm actually on the bus, you know, going to yeah. the venue and be like, yeah. oh, it's happening. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think, like I said, for me, it won't be until I'm in the venue, like, loading and setting up to play and you know, doing seeing people uh, trickling into the venue. Exactly, exactly. But uh, that's good. So now we got band member Sergio out of the way. Now let's talk hmm. the business Sergio, executive Sergio. Okay. So being, like, you know, part of vice president of Blue Swan Records, you know, did you think that it was... Do you think at times where you felt like it was hard managing like this big acquisition with Rise, like trying to, you know, I guess accommodate and compromise towards the standards for like other bands? Um, for me personally, it wasn't very difficult because that all kind of fell on Will um, because it's Blue Swan Records. It's Will uh with his vision and me just supporting what his vision is. I mean, obviously he, he's very gracious and lets me uh, chime in a good bit. And uh, it's very much a team when him and I speak together, but ultimately he's the founder and he it's his label and his vision. So um, I think what, when it comes to the acquisition, it was a little bit harder on him and there was even times where uh, he wasn't even sure if it was the way to go. And I was just, my role in that was just to be like, dude, I just back you and whatever you want to do. If you don't want to do it, I'm going to be there for you hundred percent. If you want to do it, I'm there as well. Um, and ultimately it ended up being for the best and we, and we went with it. And, and now we're, we're, we're deep into a, a relationship with, with rise and BMG and so it's been awesome. It's been a huge learning experience. Exactly. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it, when it comes to the initial thing, uh, yeah, I think that the heaviness mostly fell on Will. Oh, shit. That's not. So I hope, yeah. I hope he's doing, you know, now he's, I guess. Yeah, he's, oh, it, it was business. It's not like anything exactly. personal. You know, no, no, it's, like, it's all business in the day. But, you know, I think it's, um, it's like a new, for me personally, is like, this is something new. Like if labels can work with, you know, independent labels, I think there's, this is going to be the pros. There's going to be the cons, but mm -hmm. you got to look at it through like a more pro perspective. It's like, okay, if you manage it with like independent labels, the bands that are on independent labels can get more attention, the more marketing that they mm -hmm. need, I guess, in a way. Yeah. For, I can give you a small example of, of one of the pros. Um, like there definitely are some cons working with a massive label like BMG. Rise uh, is under BMG, and but, but but BMG being the the shot caller, they're they're at the top. Yeah. Um, but um, it the one of the, it's mostly been pros, thankfully. Even though it took so long with Idola, where we had to wait on a lot of paperwork. Um, for example, yesterday we released the music video on the Rise channel, which has 2.7 million uh, subscribers yeah. on their YouTube channel versus what Blue Swan would have done, which is uh, our, our channel, I think only has 23,000 subscribers. Um, and so there, there are for sure little, little pros that add up and, and have made it a big impact. And yeah. there's, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of stuff like that behind the scenes, but that's just a small example of, yeah, yeah. of why it's been so helpful. It's just a larger platform. Yeah, larger platform. And it gives like it, does, it gives like the, the small bands, you know, the bigger. Yeah. And that's good. That's good. And uh, but yeah, like so. So we, we can expect now, you know, a future now a future releases like a huge impact, I guess, within Rise and Blue Swan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Because. We. We have their resources and their backing and their push and their connections that they have that we didn't have before. Blue Swan was, uh, was, was compared to Rise and their connections. Uh, 
slightly limited in our abilities. Uh, and so now we have, it used to just be me and Will with releases, like everything up until this new Idola, it used to be me calling Will or Will calling me and saying, hey, what are we going to do with this band or what should we do? How should we do this release? And it's just me and him talking and obviously the band, the bands we were working with, of course, but um, ultimately he had the green light stuff and it was just me and him. But now it's, we're in email threads every day with a bunch of different people. And yeah, um, and it's, it's, things are just moving uh, in a more efficient way, even though it took, it took a while to get here. And a lot of people I know were angry at how long it took for Idola to come out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but it, it sucked watching that anger build up and also knowing that there was like a, a very legitimate reason for it, which is we're still, st we're still getting this machine running. Um, so, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's over now, you know, things for the future, they can run smoothly as opposed to like, Oh, yeah. oh we need this. We need that. And all. And, yeah. You know, I pull for the best then. Yeah. I look forward to future releases. Shit. Speaking of which, roll coda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man Rokota. um so like last time we talked you know kurt was finished with the records then when i talked with kurt you know it was all looking forward to it you know we got a little scoop so now so what's like the the update on that now um Massive. we've just been getting mixes we don't have masters yet we have uh dg's been recording with chris Crummett, and oh. so when DGD records with Crummit, he has very little time to mix. Like if he's recording, if, he's, if Crummit's recording DGD all day, and then when he's done recording them, he goes to try to mix our record. I can understand if his ears are too fatigued or it's just too, too late in the day to, to work on a mix. Um, and so it's slowed down, but I think they're almost done recording their new record soon. And so then our record will resume being mixed. Okay. Um, and so that's where we're at. We, I think we have like five songs mixed so far. That's good. Um, yeah. So can, I don't know, like, I guess I'm probably too soon to tell, but single, anything, teaser? Uh, that's the other thing. We have a single that we were going to release last year. Um, and same thing. Just last year was not a time for music, it felt like. Uh, it because here's what it for me personally it felt like it wasn't a time to go hey look at me look what i'm doing over here does that make sense yeah no, and so we we have us we had a single we had a music video done for it and um yeah it just we we've held off for it and then the whole thing with rise kicked in where they're like hey just hold off on releasing anything while we wait for um our deals to go through and all the all the legalities of things to be taken care of um so we do have a, a completely done single as a music video everything uh we're just waiting and then for the actual lp we probably have another maybe month of mixing before it gets mastered and then we can start to plan uh our release but i'm thinking either late this year or uh, early next year for royal coda good and uh, hopefully on the tour and hopefully then a little tour after that <laughs> Uh, we do have a tour plan, so uh, I don't, yeah, 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 for sure. But Royal Coda definitely has a, a tour plan. That's awesome. For, for early next year. Awesome. Um, so last time we talked, you mentioned Idola possibly doing a live stream. Is that still in the mix or slowly mm -hmm. starting to scratch off now that tours are coming back? Because tours are coming back, we've shifted our plans. So I don't think Idola is going to do a live stream anymore because we're going to go actually play live um so all right folks yeah i i we were planning it but the, i think yeah we spoke when Fe we spoke february yeah, we spoke things in february to, things weren't so clear then things weren't looking as optimistic as they're looking now so it might have been something we were talking about doing not really sure if touring was actually going to come back but that tour we're doing is 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 a go and and so if we can play live, we won't need to do a live stream. And do you, on, you know, as a musician yourself, you know, do you feel like this is with tours coming back? Is this going to be the end of live streams, or do you think there's a possibility, like you know, 
Ben's gonna be like, we'll keep the live stream. Um, but for like, you know, maybe like we'll live stream like maybe like the last show or something like that. I think there's it's gonna be an evolution of because we've DVDs. I'm sorry, I'm like trying to block the light with my head because I don't know how like bright that is compared. <laughs> maybe I'll just chill right here. Um we uh I think we're gonna see an evolution of of because yeah, we've already had concert DVDs uh forever. Like that's yeah. already been a thing. Exactly. Um but yeah, it's just getting more and more um I don't know. Because here's my problem with live streams. They weren't really live. Uh like no, it's pre-recorded. For, yeah. The there there were some that were live and but I the ones I saw had a lot of technical difficulties. And so it was like, whoa, this is kind of rough to watch. Like I remember uh I won't name the band, but I was watching one of my favorite bands live streams and they kept having to start a song over because they kept having technical difficulties and they played it off. It was funny, but because it kept happening, I just thought this is really hard to watch. And so I turned it off because I didn't want to watch it. And, uh, and then the rest of them, like I said, were all pre-recorded. Like um, they were bands that would record theirs and then get them, uh, get them doctored up a bit and, and then, and then released so that they look good. And some, not all bands did that. I, and, and shout out to the bands that were like, we're going to really do this live. We're going to try to make this as closely as possible to a live set as we can. But it just was something that felt very disingenuous to me that I just said I didn't want to do them. Because we had a, we, a couple of times offered to to us to do one. And I, I every every time I just didn't really want to. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, and I felt that you know, each, you know, each. I guess it was like a good way for fans and then also bands to be like, you know what? Let me just put something I haven't toured in a year. I haven't toured in a while. Yeah, 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 for sure. That that was that was nice. Uh, for because I'm I'm not looking at it from the perspective of somebody who might have been locked at home, and and not been able to to do much. And so I'm sure a live stream brought a lot of joy to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. for sure so uh i'm not knocking it for that i just didn't like the aspect of it that felt disingenuous which is which is was calling something a live stream when it wasn't wasn't, when it really wasn't a live stream exactly um it was it was something that was doctored and pre-planned and a lot of when a lot of stuff went into it 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 just felt weird it felt like a production yeah Um, and you know and, and you know and, and I, I can't complain, you know, like sometimes it, it was good, like to see the bands perform again, like be, be mm-hmm. creative, you know, do, do your thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, sometimes I'm like, it's not really a live stream. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, I, I don't want to discount the good that those probably brought to a lot of people mm-hmm. who were at home and couldn't do anything. And so watching a, a band they really like just playing, even if it was not really live or, um, I'm not gonna knock it for that. So, yeah. That's good. That's good. You know, the important thing is concert's coming back. So. Yeah. Yeah. Get your tickets. And, yep. Exactly. It's, and good. So with that, you know, um, let's shift gears. You just recently you did a little bid, like a little bidding. You donated one of your Nova Cursor guitars. Oh yeah. So you chose Raices. Mm-hmm. You know, you and I are both Latinos. Well, he's Muslim. Mm-hmm. So why? I know I, I shouldn't like I can't be asking like, why Raices, you know, but what made you what made you go with Raices specifically? Um, they just had the best track record. So I've donated. I do. I sold a guitar in, uh, a little bit before Christmas to donate uh, to. My sister's a lawyer, and she she's the one that pitched this organization to me. They're called the Prison Fellowship, under uh, another organization called Angel Angel Tree. But the Prison Shell Fellowship was one that um, donate donates like toys uh, mm-hmm. and things to uh, children who have uh, parents who are incarcerated. And so she's the one that picked it for me because she 
I, I'm sure had done her research. And I mean, I did my research as well after the fact, but I, tr I trust my sister, who's a lawyer, to tell me which organization deserves the, like some help or whatever. And uh, But the second one was just me. I just was like, I, I did ask around. Um, I asked my sister and, uh, and I asked a few other people who I trust. And um, I just, but I really took on the, the research part at that point and just saw that they had the best track record um, in terms of disclosing where their money goes and uh, disclosing all this type. There's a website, I forget what it's called, but they give ratings to organizations and they, they just had a good, like I said, a good track record. Um, yeah. So I picked them and their organization helps, they were helping children, migrant children uh, to have some uh, legal representation. And that was something that was, it's still in the, in the, not as big in the media right now, but it was a perpetual thing. It's like, there's, there's a lot, we're having a migrant crisis. And um, I have this for, for, for what it's worth. I'm like, I'm very comfortable. Uh, and so I'm like, what am I doing? I, I, I just felt like I just take as a fucking citizen. I'm not, I, I don't give back as much as I could. And I just, yeah, that was one, one way of feeling like I could help. So I'm going to sell a guitar. What's something that means to me? All right. The, the guitar means a lot to me. So I can sell the guitar to give, to give back. Even, even it's a very small, a very small offering. It's still something. So that's why I did the, I did, I've sold two guitars to, to donate. And, um, if I could, I'd fucking get rid of all this stuff. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah. So I know I, I just think it's great, you know, with races, you know, like again, like you know, I I know about races, you know. Then again, I graduated in political science, so I was mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on top of that. And mm -hmm. I agree with you, like the, with the migrant crisis, you know, there is a crisis, and I think it's good that you give back. It's good that we can give back, even for something small, but to those to those kids. That, you know that need like representation and like want to come here for opportunity you know yeah and the, the thing uh, we've heard this before i think but i don't know uh how big news this was was that some migrant children were going into courtrooms alone without any like they were supposed to represent themselves yeah. which they is fucking crazy say. yeah and yeah i i just feel like most of us like if you have an Instagram account or if we have social media, I, I, I'm not blaming everybody, but I feel like a lot of us live in this kind of fog where we, the, the things are terrible in, in this world. And there are ways in which if we just pull ourselves out of the fog a little bit, we can, we can do what we can to help. And then naturally we fall back into just living this uh, kind of daydream exactly like if, like if life is good for you that's awesome and i feel like life is pretty good for us all things considered but for them and, they, you have to consider that you know there's other people who don't have that yeah and i feel like that is ever present in my head lately just because of how much the news has been on the mind and um i feel like my head's being pulled out of the fog more more often than not lately and yeah, it, I, I think I said it last time, I, being a pessimist, uh, <laughs> I feel like that's always present. And so um, it's my way of trying to combat it a little, even a little bit. Exactly. You know, but it's like, you know, being like that, that altruism, you know, it's, it's, it's something good. And I got to. Yeah. It, yeah. I, but I struggle with that too. Cause I'm like, uh did i do this to make myself feel better or am i really doing like i had to analyze that myself with like from within i had to go well why am i really doing this ultimately i came up with the the answer which i think is genuine and true that i am just trying to do whatever little good that i can exactly. while i'm here uh but there is this part of it that's like oh you're only just doing that to make yourself feel better or like because i posted it on instagram to see how, who could buy the guitar um this other part of my brain is that's going, you're only doing this so people can look at you and go, 
Look how nice he is. But see, you can't see like, it. You can't let you can't that you can't let those like that fucking, well, that fucking pessimism get to you. Right. I know, and I know that's the part of my brain. That's the same part and of my brain. And we're all like that. I'm like that myself. I'm like, am I doing this because I want to, or because is this gonna benefit me in the future that I can use? Yeah. And I'm just like, no, like Brian, snap the fuck out of it. You're yeah. We're, we're genuine souls. I mean, I think we're all genuine souls. Uh, yeah, and but I don't know, man. This part, this this uh some of some of some aspects of society these days make people very disingenuous very true uh, <laughs> and i and i think i think uh social media is a big part of that which is which is really hard to contend with because yeah we we need it for our livelihood we, that's how music gets out like if we didn't have instagram yesterday who knows how many people the, the idola song would have reached true. Um, if we didn't have youtube yesterday that kind of thing so there's the pros. Yeah. And yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah. <laughs> I probably need to go on deep, but yeah. I get, I get you. I get you. I get what you mean. But, uh, and yeah, you know, speaking of like, I know as a, as a Latino, like, you know, you representing like Hispanics like myself, mm-hmm. you feel like you're making an impact within the community, you know, being these, like, you know, like you're like, you're in these big bands and like, you see someone like like I got my little cousin, and I'm like, yeah, no, he's you know he's Argentina and Mexicano, and she's like, wow, man, if he can do it, then I can do it. I was like, oh, again, <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily see myself like that, because I, to me, that's just, uh, especially from coming from a a family of two immigrants, um, to me, it's just to give it. It's like you, that's your kind of role. You got to do what you can to survive. <laughs> I mean, I, I come from family, so. yeah, and it's tough. It's, it's tough. Yeah, and but to me, it's like, uh, yeah, it. I forget where I heard this, but like, it, it's it said that fam uh, children who are the families of first generation immigrants do better than those who are of third or fourth generation. Um, or who live, who are already naturalized citizens, and it's part because it's just necessity that's driving them. Mm-hmm. They they they're not working hard for any other reason that than that they have to. Um, I don't necessarily feel like I, um, it's that um, grim for me, or that it ever was that grim for me. But I definitely feel like if I don't work or continue to work on something that um that i think my my the motivation is necessity like i have to, i just have to this is just what i have to do um so yeah um sorry we might have skewed a little bit from your initial point no i mean no i, did not. I mean that's 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 why i do this shit you know like i like having conversations like this you know i like mm-hmm. you know just speak what's on your mind and I don't think a lot of interviewers do that often. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, no, we just want to focus this and this. I'm like, nah, bro. Like, speak your mind. We're all human, and I think that's why I, you know, not to sound cocky, but <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, that's, well, no, that's what that's why like that's why like makes me a good interviewer because I don't, I'm not, I'm not treating you as an artist or as like, you yeah, know, oh, I'm treating you as, the, as Sergio Medina, the the individual, the human. Yeah, which is awesome, and why we probably say yes to do not that we're exclusive with doing interviews with people because uh we're not we 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 will we'll talk this group of people will talk to anybody but but there are people that we like to say yes to because uh because we feel like we're speaking like a human and uh i think that's really important in a time that it nothing feels very human yeah exactly. know, everything everything feels a little disingenuous and um now i think that's why uh, long form podcasting is really popular. Like a lot of people right now will sit down and listen to a two or three hour conversation. Um, even if it's with two people that are, that are super highly successful and, and, and have a lot of money and they're, if they're speaking like humans then it just feels Genuine. like it's something worth interesting or worth listening to. Exactly. Like me, like I'm just, you know, regular post college kid, you know, just, mm-hmm. I just, you know, hit you up and, you know, if you say yes, you say yes. If you say, if you don't answer or you say no, then I don't know. I'm chilling. Yeah. You know? 
I'm just grateful for the opportunities that I get. And when I get them, I make it worth the time. Yeah. So that's yeah. like, but it means a it's lot, you, you know, that, you know, they, they, like, that's all you can do. One, one of the people, I'm like, it means yeah. a lot. You know, like, one of those people that you'll say yes to, like, I'm like, yeah. yeah. You, you said, so you've talked to Kurt and who else? I've talked to Kurt. I've caught, talked to Tyler. I've talked to you. I've talked to Tim. Tim Furyk? Yeah, Tim Furyk. Nice. I, I really love that dude. Wish I could talk to Donovan. So. Has he, have you tried hitting him up? Yeah, I tried. That didn't work out. You know, there was there was there was one advice that you know that Tyler and Tim said. Hmm. If you're gonna, we you can if you if you're gonna hit up someone with a check mark, nine out of ten, you probably won't get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> that check mark it, that doesn't mean anything. I'm like, I'm like, um, oh, we. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Yeah. Then again, I was just starting, so you yeah, know, it's, it, it's 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 something for me. It's like. I'm just, I do this as, you know, because I want to get to know more artists, you know, and I want, I'm mm-hmm. trying to get fans, you know, something back. Yeah. You no, know, it's like my little yeah. altruistic thing, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Who, I, I personally don't know how much value this stuff brings to people because when I do interviews or talk to people, I'm just kind of talking and I don't know who's going to listen. I just always assume that no one's going to listen to it. This, like, I, it's me. I, just, I, I just like tweet, I'm like, hey, you want to listen to it? Check it out. If not, yeah, well. I I do this podcast with my mom, and I do it for us. I don't do it because I think we're gonna build an audience. Like I I see how many people have listened to it, and I think, oh, that's kind of cool. But I don't. It, it doesn't influence my was... my my actions on how I do it or how uh or yeah how I do it or. Exactly. Um, same, yeah. same with the, the Stolas. We have a, a podcast with my old band that I was going to get into that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, we don't care. I mean, it's cool seeing how many people still care about that band uh, because yeah. that, that podcast weirdly has uh, a little bit of a, of a following. And I'm sure it's just people from this community, but it doesn't influence whether or not we do it or whether or not we do it regularly. We just do it and we just have a fucking blast doing it. Exactly. And that's and, what matters. Like, uh, that's the same thing to me. Like, I do this shit because I love it. I love talking to yeah. you guys, you know? And yeah, but speaking of, the, I was going to get into the podcast. So, yeah, go ahead. With your mom is great. Like, I, I fucking <laughs> love it, man. Oh, do, and do you speak Spanish? And yeah, exactly. I speak Spanish. So, so, yeah. like, so, I'm fluent. Yeah. I'm like, like, this is so awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And um, yeah, because, continue. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I think that's one of the things that, um, is is kind of a block with that podcast because i speak my mom speaks in spanish a lot and and i don't always do the best job translating and so i can only imagine like there was one time i was listening to an audiobook where the narrator kept uh speaking in french but not translating what he was saying Mm -hmm. and i just turned the book off i was like i don't need to listen to this i can't even understand it exactly i'm I'm just in spanish i'm like I'm like on my phone, like I'm listening. I'm like, I'm chill, I'm vibing. And then it's like, what is yeah. he saying? I'm like, <laughs> this man, I can't. Like, yeah. I'm good at, I speak good Spanish, but translating, yeah. bro, I, that, that, that's, that's, I'm not your guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, the Stolas podcast, that, that's a great thing. I, uh, um, I just, this is just on my curiosity with the way the podcast mm-hmm. has been going. Do you see a possibility of a Stolas reunion? Uh, no, even, even if, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, all right, uh, well, just, just to be fair, like, also, like, I did get this, this question was like one of my friends, like, can you like ask if this is gonna be a stole or you know, like, I'm like, um, ask, but maybe not. And I was like, I had that yeah, much. we, and it's partly my fault. I, when, when, when we broke up the band, Carlo said, look, we can break the band up and that's it. And no, nothing, no reunion, no nothing, just that's it. Or we could go on hiatus and just not say anything. But I wanted to do a tour where we brought back our old bass player and our old singer guitar player, the original lineup, mm-hmm. and, and do that. I, that's what I wanted to do. And so he said, well, we'll just end the band and that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll Stolas will break up. We'll do our final tour with the original lineup, and that's it. And 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 we'll never do anything again. And I went, all right, that works with me. Let's do it. That was between me and Carlo. 
And so lately with the pandemic hit and then uh, there was some talks about Stolas maybe hopping on Swan Fest. And I brought it to the guys. I was like, dude, we, can, we might like our first show back could be at this big festival. Do you guys want to do it? And uh, everybody kind of like, nah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so because we said what we said we said we we're never going to break be a band that breaks up and then comes back a couple years later because every band does that every band does that yeah uh, I mean, and like, like the one off show like oh yeah yeah we're coming back just for like one night but you guys are saying yeah. like, nope it's done it's yeah done. we said we said no weirdly enough though somebody asked stole us if we could play their wedding and we might do that <laughs> we might play a wedding instead of a big festival <laughs> all right you know it, it, there's a one-off show folks so <laughs> yeah uh as it, it that would be like a statement it would be kind of because we I, I don't feel like i'm a jokester in any other realm outside of my life than in than when i was in stolas and then when i do the podcast with them yeah uh i feel like those guys naturally bring out a funny bone in me and I just want to joke around. And so to me, then to us, the ultimate joke for Stolas would be to play a small, intimate 30 person wedding than to play a 10,000 person festival. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like and so uh, we haven't said yes to either of those shows. We, neither of those things might happen, but. I mean, uh, hey man, a wedding gift, that'd be cool for the bride and groom if they're Stolas. Yeah yeah so who knows we don't we don't know what's gonna happen um but and aside from that the podcast is just a fun thing to do with old exactly. friends and but and there is an objective it's like we want to talk about the mistakes we made as a band and uh and if anybody wants to start a band or that is uh that is going to listen can maybe hear something that uh makes them go oh i won't do that i won't make that mistake then cool yeah. but exactly. But and also like you guys like I like even like even like oh and also your brother put out a record, mm -hmm. so that must have been like fucking great for you as well like you know being like seeing him yeah. like, you know, put out that stuff and you also and you also contributed to like to to your brother's record. Yeah, I, I played some bass and some guitar on it, uh, and then I uh, got Joe Arrington to play drums on it. Yeah, uh, and then Drew Owens who did. Oh, I like birds from Indian Lakes. He did a CMVR record. Um, he did a DGD record, I think, too. Um, he he did my little brother's record, and uh, yeah, just wanted to help out family because that's a. I'm sure as you know, uh, coming from a Latino Hispanic background, family is really important. Very. I'm for sure family is really important across the board, but I've noticed oh, that it's it kind been of like like then like the like hispanos like our 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 culture like our cultura like we're we're, we're together like no matter what yeah we're thick and yeah thin. i got and you it's, not me yeah it's just interesting to walk around the world thinking that or seeing that that's not the case across culture but i i think it's pretty uh yeah family is everything definitely and, family and, is everything yeah so um, Oh, always like you like man even like, even though my brother like pisses me off sometimes yeah dude me and my little brother have gotten fucking fist fight i've never fought a person and neither my, have I've, <laughs> I've never been in a fight but me and my little brother have gone at it like physically literally and, like I'll be, I'll be throwing this motherfucker like doing some yeah shit. it's and, been years it's been years it was mostly when we were little but yeah but yeah uh but even know. though I got my dad coming out with like with like La like Correa. I'm be like, no, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, yeah. So he put out a record, and I'm doing what I can to help him out with it. Exactly. Um, yes, and he's gonna also go on tour, correct? Uh, and he's playing one show, right? Uh, here in Vegas, July eighth, I think. Um, but aside from that, um there's no touring plans right now just because we it's such a clusterfuck a little bit right now because everybody sees that they can tour in the fall yeah and so like, everybody's I'm, trying to book a show and i'm like, like and i'm here like i like yo chill like only my credit card can only do so much <laughs> yeah 
So it might be a little bit tough. It might, I think a lot of it's going to start happening really next year because um, it's going to take the rest of this year to kind of get the ball moving again. Yeah. Definitely. And next year is when things hopefully will really start happening. All right. Well, anyway, I, I think we've said enough that we needed to say <laughs> else. Um, I can't really think of anything. Um, other than like you know, I know am I like that's that's like that's the thing. Like you get so into these conversations that you're just like you start vibing, and then you're like, what the <laughs> what <are> you got? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um uh no, I we covered Idola, Nova, Dakota. I guess touring. I mean, what city you look forward to go? Um we see New York. No, I, yeah, <laughs> hammer. We're playing Hammerstein or Hammerstein? Hammerstein Ballroom. That's yeah. Catch me there. Yeah. Catch me there. Yeah. I've never been there and I've never played there. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that one. Um and East Coast, baby. East Coast. Yeah, I'm I'm just looking forward to seeing how my body handles being on the road again because I spent like eight years just constantly touring and on the road and and then like that I, and, and it just stopped. It just stopped one day. And so who knows if my body's just going to be able to, like I just did recording and uh, recording isn't very exhaustive. It's not as exhaustive as um, going on tour where you have to move gear and fucking play every night, which is all great, but it's very exhausting on the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, recording took a lot out of me. Like I feel tired right now. And <laughs> I slept like 12 hours um and it's just part of it's to travel too like we had a long travel day getting back from new york but um yeah i'm just i'm looking forward to seeing how being on the road post pandemic uh is gonna how i yeah how i handle it because i remember asking you back in february like what's something that you know taking from this if you ever go back to normal back at the time it was like if you ever go back to normal what's something that you're gonna value more and, you know, it was like, you said it was touring, you know, like learning to like, mm -hmm. now, like we're coming back to it. But now it's like, now it's the real test. Of, let's see if I actually like, you know, value this. Yeah. I say I'm sure I, I'm, I for sure value it. Um, no, and, I say, let me rephrase that more like, all right, it's coming back. I need to like, you know, aprovechar esto. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, it's hard when I'm in it, especially when I'm, on a tour that is really exhausting and I'm just tired and I'm ready to go home. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me to be outside of it going, man, I miss those times. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to this tour, seeing how exhausting it is and how I can still feel grateful while simultaneously feeling as fucking tired and dead as I, as I can get on tour. Literally. Um, that me too. I'm excited, you know, the yeah. I'm inside all energetic, waiting online, and then be <laughs> and then come home and be like, yo, I need a let me just shower. Yeah. Put on like my old tunnels and sweatpants and just knock the fuck out, bro. I'm dead. Yep. Yep. But uh yeah, man. Um, I'm not sure if, you, if there's any other questions, but um I think I've said everything I, I, I said. I, I think, yeah, I think I think it's a vibe. I mean. I know you, I know you have something to do, so I'm, you know, I'm going to leave you to, you know, live your life, cool. bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm just, me and Carlo are supposed to go get on a boat and go get on the lake. <laughs> bro, what the fuck are you doing here? Get out, go. <laughs> go, man, go have fun. <laughs> but yeah, man, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Hey, and uh, Always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. Guys, yeah. take care. Remember to subscribe and check out Sergio, man, on anywhere bro I'm like i don't know yeah, and i don't even really? have anything to name off because right now it's idola idola is the focus idola, right real coda you know spotify apple music and if you want to yeah. check out some podcasts definitely check stalls and check out you know with sergio and mama medina man yeah it's yeah a vibe. it's a vibe <laughs> sergio thank you so much guys thank man. you man see you